And delighted to be joined right now by the Environment Secretary, George Eustace. Good morning to you. Good morning. Always good to find other people working on a bank holiday Monday. Very, very encouraging. Now, you're here to talk about uh, what there has been, I mean, undoubtedly, the hugely successful uh, charge, the levy on single-use carrier bags introduced back in 2015. I can't believe it's five years ago. Five pence a bag that has been hugely successful in getting people to use reusable bags, bags for life. But uh, you're going, you're announcing today that it's going to be uh, increased, indeed doubled from next year. Why do you need to bring in a 10p charge? Well, we've um, looked at this. We're also uh, extending it, by the way, to smaller retailers. So uh, it applied first to the larger retailers, mainly the supermarkets. As you said, it's been a great success. Uh, the number of uh, bags used, single-use bags, has gone from some seven and a half billion, and that's been reduced by about 95 percent. But the uh, evidence we've got is that increasing it to 10 pence will uh, make a further difference, will further drive behaviour change and get more people uh, thinking about taking a bag with them before they go shopping, getting in the habit of doing so, as many already have done, uh, but also extending it to some of those uh, smaller retailers uh, who at the moment between them still issue around three and a half billion bags a year. We want to see a similar reduction on that front. Many of those small retailers are up for doing this. They want to be supportive. Some of them have tried to do it voluntarily, but feel a bit undermined if other retailers don't. So uh, we're going to extend it to everyone uh, it's a, a, a policy that's got quite a lot of support from the public. Public consciousness around plastics has been uh, rising, so we hope to see a further reduction. Um, I can absolutely understand the extension to smaller retailers. I was quite surprised in a local news agent buying you know, a couple of pints of milk and then giving, me in a, giving it to me in, a, in, a, in one of those very thin plastic bags and thinking, wow, I haven't seen one of those for a long time. Um, but if a policy, if a tax, it actually has a 95% success rate, I mean, there aren't many other taxes that have that sort of access rate. Um, I'd like to say I didn't want the tax to come in. I thought it was ridiculous at the time. I, I stand corrected. It has worked. We're no longer using those bags. But but why would you need to double it? If people are already not buying, uh, not, sorry, not taking plastic bags and they're choosing not to pay five pence for them, why on earth do you need to double it? Well, we think it uh, will make a difference. Obviously, we looked uh, at this closely. I, am, I understand your point, but... Uh, we had a consultation on it. We looked at it closely. And I think um, there are two things. There's a sense that after a while, for those who've not got in the habit of uh, reusing uh, bags, um, then they, that the 5P starts to become something they get used to. Uh, and therefore, you, you need to have that extra uh, spur to, to remind them to think about this, to try to jet drive behavior change. Uh, but also, uh, it means that more people are likely uh, to choose uh, one of the bags for life and are then more likely uh, to reuse that rather than staying in the habit of single-use okay. area bags. So we, we, we looked at it carefully. I understand your point. Uh, the 5P has indeed been very successful on supermarkets, but we judge that moving it to 10P will make uh, a significant uh, okay. difference. Look, I mean, I've never understood why, you know, if I buy a plastic bag, I should be blamed for someone later on, you know, a year on throwing it into uh, the, the, the Pacific Ocean and killing a dolphin with it. I've always thought that was rather strange. That They seem to be to be very different issues. But undoubtedly, we've got rid of having all those plastic bags. However, in terms of the environmental benefits of that policy, there's still quite a big question mark about this because even though people like me, I mean, I've, I occasionally use the thicker plastic bags, uh, the ones that already cost 10 or 20p, but mostly I use um, some reusable bags. And again, I've used them for, for all the five years, big solid bags. Well, they're probably nearing their end of their life now. But a thick plastic bag needs to be used 37 times before uh, it actually saves uh, in terms of environmental output and carbon emissions and like. Paper bags, 34 times. Cotton bags, very, very popular and very green, and people wear them with a sort of lot of virtue signaling. You have to use them more than 7,000 times uh, before you've actually uh, had a lesser impact on the environment. So although we've been successful in cutting down the number of plastic bags used, have we actually done any good for the environment? Well, yes, uh, we think we have. We've looked at both measures. Um, uh, the carbon emissions that come from the manufacture of bags uh, but also, obviously, the, the total volume of plastic that's at risk of getting into the environment on, on both those fronts, uh, it has been a success. I know that people do raise uh, the issue that those bags for life, the thicker plastic bag, if people just keep buying them and disposing them, then obviously that is worse. But um, overall, they're not doing that. People are reusing those bags. And if you uh, consider not just the, you know, the carbon input to these bags, but also the impact on the environment with plastics getting into the ocean. This has been a, a 
a very successful policy. It's why we want to extend it. OK, let's also talk about other policies. Uh, some uh, tax rises were floated in the Sunday papers at the weekend, whether it came out of the Treasury or another department, even possibly number 10. Who knows? Uh, but we are looking at £30 billion pounds of tax rises being, say, being floated, including things like uh, corporation tax going up, capital gains tax at the same rate as income tax, pensions tax relief cut, cutting possibly the foreign aid budget, uh, lots of uh, uh, other taxes as well into the bargain. Um, do you think the possibility of all these tax rises is a reason why the, the Labour Party are now at 40% in the polls, neck and neck with the Tories? Do you think you're actually the Conservative government that a lot of people voted for in last December actually expected to get? Well, look, I think um, the point I'd make is in the run-up to any budget, and uh, we've got one obviously this autumn, there's always a lot of speculation about what may or may not be in there. I mean, you know, you'll know, Julia, as a minister in the government, I can't comment on that speculation indeed. I'm sure that uh, Rishi Sunak and the Prime Minister are uh, thinking about what the approach should be in that budget. They're probably be some tax measures, probably be some uh, spending measures as well, just as is the case in every single budget. But I can't really comment on that speculation. But look, on the on the wider point, um, yes, polls do move around a lot. Um, we've been through some incredibly difficult challenges, obviously, trying to manage this coronavirus in common with uh, countries right around the world. Um, it's been a, an evolving situation. We've been learning more about the virus uh, as it goes on. We've had to react to things very, very uh, quickly and refine our approach uh, as time uh, moves on to try to get things right. It's been a very difficult situation, um, but I, uh, I've learned a long time ago uh, not to, to base everything on a single uh, poll result that comes in a Sunday newspaper. OK, but um, let's also talk about you know, just general faith, general uh, confidence in the government. Lots of concerns and we've just been hearing about the issues over the exams fiasco and how that dented uh, confidence for a lot of parents, whether or not the, the government was competent in dealing with schools going back. A lot of people also questioning this uh, drive to get people back into the workplace. I, I'm, you know, you're obviously at Westminster right now. Westminster is MP supposed to be coming back tomorrow. I'm in my workplace right now, along with the production team. Millions and millions of others are now working from home pretty much full time. Um, the government's supposed to be having this big back to work campaign this week. Are we going to see that? And is the government even confident they can get people back to our city centres? Well, look, I, I think it's important to note that, um, you know, in many walks of life right around the country, uh, people have been working. So the, if anybody was working in a food factory, um, they would never have even um, gone into lockdown properly. They, we were asking them to continue to work and their companies worked out ways to enable that to be done safely. Um, sectors like construction uh, were returning from June. Uh, other manufacturing sectors have been getting back in the saddle for some time now. And our message really is the, the final piece of the jigsaw, if you like, those people who work in offices. Uh, we want to make sure that they can return to work safely. Um, uh, we're not forcing them to return to work. It's a judgment that obviously companies individually have got to make um, about the number of staff they want back, how many can work safely in their own particular office environment. Uh, but our message this week is that, um, you know, the guidance is there for employers. Uh, people can work safely in an office environment. And we want to encourage those conversations okay. to take place just, so that, well, we'll never get back to normal. We can get as many people as possible. Just, just finally, what percentage of the civil servants and the staff in your office in the Environment Department are back at work now in the, in the workplace? We don't, but I, I've had a, a team of civil servants working um, very hard throughout this pandemic. And I've certainly been back in the office in DEFRA, supported by staff on a daily basis. Okay, so what percentage uh, of your staff are back in the office? Um, we don't have a target for the percentage, but in common... I didn't ask you what the target was. How many, what percentage we, of your staff well, are back in the office? Target, um, our target, if you like, Julia, is to make sure that it's a safe environment for people to get back. I didn't to. ask you about a target. I asked you how many of your staff are back in the office. Well, today it's a bank holiday, so I suspect very few. <sighs> OK, uh, how many were back in the office on tomorrow. Friday when it wasn't a bank holiday? Well, I, I don't know how many were there on Friday, but certainly... Um, you don't know how many... Um, you you don't know how many people in your own department. You're the, you're the Environment Secretary and you don't know how many staff in the Environment Department are in the office. I didn't know precisely how okay, many. OK, all right. 812, 813. How, what percentage? Oh, is it is it 5%? Is it 20%? Is it 50%? You must have a rough idea. Surely... You, you, I mean, you must have conversations with your permanent secretary for who, whose responsibility it would be. I, what per, you must have an idea. I think it's impossible to, to argue that you don't know how many people, give or take, roughly as a percentage, are back in your building. 
Well, I don't know how many checked in yesterday, but what I can say is that I've been working with the Permanent Secretary and uh, our officials on making sure that the environment is safe so that we can get as many people as possible uh, returning, and that work's been going on over the summer. Do you not know the answer, or do you know the answer and it's just embarrassingly low and you don't want to say? I, 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 genuinely, I don't know the answer. Um, I'm returning to work uh, today. Um, and uh, we'll be back in the office uh, tomorrow. I All wasn't right. in the office on Friday. I have to admit, Julie, I've been... You, you're allowed to have a day off and you're, that's fine. That's fine. But you've been in the office I, for the last few weeks. You must have a clue. I, I don't know the numbers of people who came in on Friday, if that's your um, your answer. I mean, that's your question. What about Thursday? Um, but what I, what I do know is I've been working very hard to make sure that people can return <laughs> to work uh, safely. Right. It won't be um, possible for everyone to return to work because you won't be able to have okay. every workstation. Do you accept, stuff. though, that the government needs to lead from the front on this and get people back? Will you send me a text tomorrow when you see how many people are in the office? <laughs> I may well do that. Thank you very much, George Eustace, Education, sorry, Education, sorry, Environment Secretary. Thank you very much.